everybody. It is Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com and today we are going to be having happy hour and talking about DHA and ARA, which are fatty acids in baby formula, and the sometimes controversial hexane extraction, which is the method by which these fatty acids are uh, extracted, generated to be put into baby formula. Baby Vaughn will be joining us for some of this. I hope you can't hear. Petey is upstairs with Daddy playing, um, which it's currently just involving a lot of crying. <laughs> Somehow, despite my best efforts, Petey is just quite a mama's boy lately. And so we're trying to um, have him enjoy time with Daddy more. And it's going fairly poorly. But my husband is such a trooper. Oh my God. Anyway, so we we'll probably won't be seeing Petey. Um, Vaughn is teething, so all of us are just so sleep deprived. <laughs> okay, but let's get into it about fatty acids. DHA and ARA in baby formula uh, is kind of a big deal in terms of a marketing aspect. Most baby formulas today have DHA and ARA, even though they are technically not required. The big exception is a lot of organic formulas, not a lot, but um, several organic formulas do not. Because it is not required, uh, the FDA doesn't require it to be in baby formula, and so it's not one of those things that you see on the back label, you know, like fat, calories, and you'll see like vitamin A, calcium, a whole slew of stuff. You won't see DHA and ARA. So it's it, you, there's no way to know that it's in the formula unless you look for it on the list of ingredients or most formulas that have it usually um, advertise it on the front. So I've had a couple questions emailed to me um, about DHA and ARA, so I'm going to try to hit them all here and then explain to you what hexane extraction is and whether or not you should care. So first, the reason DHA and ARA are not required is they are not considered quote-unquote essential fatty acids. There are only two essential fatty acids, meaning that our bodies need them to survive. Um, if you don't get them from your diet, you will die. So there are only two. All the other fatty acids, your body has the ability to generate from these two building blocks. Oh, I'm getting notifications. Sorry. I'm like an old woman. Like, oh, I can't even read that. <laughs> um, so DHA and ARA are not essential. Your body can build DHA from shorter fatty acids, so, which is why it's not required. And so some formulas that do not add DHA and ARA make a really big deal about this. Oh my goodness, yes. And they say, your body can build DHA, so there's no reason to add it to a formula, um, especially since these fatty acids go through this terrible hexane extraction. So the reason DHA, I, when I'm going to say DHA a lot, and I'm saying, so it's DHA and ARA. Um, DHA stands for docosahexanoic acid, and ARA stands for is it arachidonic acid, which is clearly why we abbreviate them. What is an omega-6? What is an omega-3? That just refers to basically their chemical structure, but you hear about omega-3s a lot, right? Like that's what makes fish oil so sexy. So they're healthy fatty acids. The reason that they're added to formula is, yes, your body can build them, but particularly infants, the enzymes that build DHA out of shorter fatty acids aren't the most powerful enzymes in your body, meaning they don't work that efficiently. Um, in premature infants, they work even less. So premature infants really need these fatty acids in their diet. Poor internet connection. And um, I think it's really important to add these to newborn formulas as well. The other big reason they're added is because breast milk has a lot of DHA in it particularly. Also, newborn brains or babies' brains, you know, especially from zero to six months, the time that an infant is primarily breastfed before they're getting other foods, um, they incorporate a lot. Oh, excuse me, you're fine. A lot of DHA, particularly into their brain. Probably more DHA than they would be able to generate using their own enzymes from these other fatty acids. And the general scientific thought is 
Most of that GHA is coming directly from breast milk and then being directly incorporated into the cells in their brain. That's why people, formula companies, add it to formula. So the two, the two big reasons are there's, a, there's usually a lot in breast milk and infants exhibit this accumulation of DHA in, in their brain. So we want formula fed infants to be able to do that too. Okay. A lot of things what we do with formula fed infants is we just try to make them look like breastfed infants. And like, honestly, that's pretty much it. So yes, infants can make DHA. However, breastfed infants are getting a lot of it in breast milk, which is why we add it. Okay, so that's why it's in there. Um, and that's why I agree that, it, that it's helpful to have it in a formula, especially for newborn. Once infants are older, especially once they start eating fish um, and other kinds of food, they can, they can get it from there. But if, if a newborn is exclusively formula fed, I do like to have them on a formula that has DHA in it. Or if they choose a formula that doesn't have DHA, to add a DHA supplement to their formula so that they're getting that to be able to build their brain the way breastfed babies build their brains. I'm gonna back up and say, if you haven't been doing this, don't panic. There's tons of research that still has not proven a, a clear benefit of supplementing formula-fed babies with DHA. We still do it because it, it's trying to get at what breast milk looks like, but um, there's there's been no documentation of harm, per se, um, of feeding a baby a formula that doesn't have DHA in it. So it is my personal recommendation that is based on research to provide DHA, but if you have been doing this or you've got an older kid that you fed a formula about DHA, oh my God, they will be fine. They're brilliant. Don't panic. But I do get questions about it, so I want you to know the science behind it. Now let's talk about hexane extraction. Y'all know that I live in Colorado. I do not live in Boulder, um, but we have the Boulder phenomenon, I call it in Colorado. Uh, so, not to stereotype, because I consider myself kind of a barefoot hippie, um, but the concern over hexane extraction, which is a process used to collect DHA and ARA to put in formula, is usually kind of a, a hippie-ish concern. So, I'm going to tell you what it is, why people are concerned about it, and then you can make your own decision. So we get DHA and ARA that we add to formula from, I have to remind myself, I wrote it down. ARA comes from Mortierella alpina oil, which is actually oil that is extracted from a fungus. Mortierella alpina is a fungus that that naturally produces this fatty acid. And then we extract the fatty acid and put it in formula. Similarly, DHA we get in a very similar way from Cryptocodinium, yeah, Cryptocodinium coni oil. Um, and that's an algae. Crypt Cryptocodinium algae is an, Cryptocodinium cohini is an algae that, that makes DHA. And so we extract the DHA from it and add it into formula. So that's what you see on the list of ingredients. Like why can't it just say DHA? So you'll see Mortierella alpina oil, or sometimes it's abbreviated M alpina. And then for DHA, you'll see Cryptocodinium coni oil or just C coney oil. Usually there's an asterisk and at the very bottom of the ingredients it will say a source of DHA and a source of ARA. So we obviously aren't just adding fungus and algae to formula. We are extracting these individual fatty acids and adding them to the formula. This is where hexane extraction comes in. Hexane is a really nasty solvent. Um, as part of my nerd badge of honor, I have used hexane in several labs that I have worked in for extracting all kinds of uh, fats. You know, the problem with fats is that they don't dissolve in, oil, in water. So you have all these solvents, some of them are pretty nasty, to extract all kinds of things. Hexane is one of these. So hexane itself is a very nasty chemical um, that, that, you know, they, if you read about it, it's a neurotoxin. Like, yes, if you drink hexane, you are in huge trouble and you may die. Um, however, so hexane is used in the process of extracting these oils from the fungus and the algae. But if the process is done correctly, which is very tightly regulated, it's not like any hexane ends up in the formula. Again, because it's poisonous. <laughs> so, 
That's where the controversy comes in, though, is that there are several um, activist groups, um, including individual parents, who think that this, um, this, this chemical is so toxic that it should not even be used in the processing of any ingredients that end up in formula. That's where the controversy comes in. The other half of the controversy is, um, particularly if, if you are really big into the organic world, the Cornucopia Institute is an institute that I do actually very highly respect. They have a big report about how any hexane extracted ingredients of any kind should not be included in or, in organic product. I'm not going to comment on that either way. What I am going to say is the FDA regulates formula. The FDA approved after um, a lot of research, the FDA approved this method of basically gathering DHA and ARA for use in formula. Every single ingredient in formula goes through an approval process in the FDA to get a GRAS, G-R-A-S designation. That stands for generally recognized as safe. So this extraction process is generally recognized as safe. And if you have DHA and ARA in your formula, and you buy formula from the United States, every single formula company except one, which I'll talk about, uses this source of ARA and DHA in their formula. So one, you should know that. If you think hexane extraction is a really big deal for you and your family, you're in a pickle for finding a formula in the US if you want the formula to already have these added. You could always pick one without and then supplement at home. So. The, the formula that is the exception is babies only, dairy plus ARA and DHA. So babies only makes a lot of formulas. They are all toddler formulas. I have a whole Q&A about that that I think I did two weeks ago. So if you are considering uses for a newborn, please, it is an absolute must that you go back and listen to that and discuss it with your doctor. Um, the punchline is, I think, you'll probably be fine, but you need to know what you're getting into. Only one of their formulas, their babies only dairy plus DHA ARA uses uh, an egg phospholipid based source of ARA and DHA. So basically they go through a completely different extraction process to extract these fatty acids from egg yolks as opposed to individual fungus and algae that I mentioned earlier. Um, I think that's awesome. It's great to have options. Like that's the whole, uh, almost the whole point of me doing this is that formulas are not the same. You have a lot of options. The, uh, the thing that I don't like is because DHA and ARA are not required by the FDA, the amounts that are in formula are usually not listed. So First of all, you gotta go look for that unpronounceable name in the list of ingredients to know that it's even in there. Then you don't know how much is in there. So for instance, I've actually called some companies to look into this. So uh, the baby's only formula that does have DHA and ARA, which is from eggs, has six milligrams of DHA and 12 milligrams of ARA which is fine, but um, a kind of, I guess, competitor because another organic formula, Plum, which I do like, um, they have three times, literally three times as much of both of those in their formula. And like, first, both are fine. Um, but I wanna know that just as a mom, I wanna know what I'm feeding my baby. So I'll be doing research and trying to put these numbers out there for you on the website so you have a place to go and look, but you just have to know you're, you're kind of stuck with looking for it on the ingredients list at this point in time. Now, the range of DHA and ARA that you find in breast milk is all over the map, which is why I say it's probably fine to do either. The amount of these fatty acids is gonna be dependent mostly on how much mom eats of these fatty acids. So for instance, women from Japan who eat fish three times a day have like crazy high amounts of DHA in their breast milk. Clearly their babies are fine. Um, whereas a lot of women who are like maybe live in a landlocked state in the United States don't eat fish that often, their breast milk is naturally gonna be much lower in these fatty acids and their babies grow and perform exactly the same. Now, there is more DHA in breast milk than formula, obviously, if we don't add it. So that gets back to the beginning of my talk and I'm not gonna rehash it. 
Okay, the last thing I'm gonna say is I'm gonna give you my personal opinion on hexane extraction. Um, if you are just tuning in now, not to be salesy, but you gotta watch this happy hour from the beginning where I explain what hexane extraction is and why people are concerned about it. This is my general opinion for the average, you know, my whole disclaimer, for the average healthy term formula fed infant, you know, who doesn't have any metabolic disorders or huge health issues, I don't think you should worry about hexane extraction. I um, have this group of ingredients in formula that I call last resort ingredients. Hexane extracted, DHA and ARA fall into this category of if you have a baby that has just had bad luck, like you know something in the, like you are 100% sure that it's something in the formula that is really, really causing your infant significant discomfort and you have gone through all the steps of, you know, ruling out the protein source, ruling out all the things that are much more likely to cause a problem. DHA and ARA is something that you could consider. If you were working with me as a client, it's one of the very last things we would consider switching out. I say this because there have been reports to the FDA. Um, the FDA collects reports, kind of like the CDC, if you have a bad reaction to the flu shot, you're supposed to call the CDC and tell them because they monitor that stuff. The FDA does this with formula. So there have been over 100 reported cases of um, a negative reaction to uh, these hexane extracted DHA and ARA in formula where the infant has you know severe diarrhea like pretty nasty stuff and when they switch to a formula without DHA and ARA cures everything so they're pretty sure that was the source um, so a hundred infants sounds like a lot but when you consider the literally uh, millions of infants now that have been fed these formulas over the years it's not a lot um, that is not to belittle the suffering of those 100 families or you if you are suffering from an infant that has a tolerance issue. Um, so that is my opinion on why if your baby has an issue with their formula, basically I think there are first protein but several other places in the formula that you should consider as the likely uh, culprit before you consider the DHA and the ARA, and mostly because I want your baby to be getting DHA and ARA, um, especially if you're not breastfeeding at all. The other ingredients, some of which I consider these last resort ingredients, like you'll hear about in, in the very similar hippie community that I partake in, um, like carabine, carrageenan or soy lecithin, um, which you can read really scary things about online and it freaks moms out and I totally get it. Um, but I, I lump all of those into this category of don't worry about them unless you have a really firm reason to. And and if you have that firm of a reason, you should be under the well, it's playing with the tripod. You should be under the guidance of a healthcare provider at that point. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I threw a lot of big words at you, some of which I you're all right, some of which I mispronounced. Um I've done a lot of research on this. I have the cornucopia report on DHA and ARA saved. If you want to have a conversation with me about it, I'd love to. Uh, get a hold of me through the Facebook page or the website. The take home message is, um, if your baby's doing well, I don't think you should worry about hexane extraction. Um, if you're convinced this might be a problem, please watch this happy hour all the way through and then um, consider switching it out and adding a different source of DHA ARA into their diet. Um, Nordic Naturals and the Honest Company sell a fish oil based baby DHA supplement um, that's formulated specifically for infants that I like. Um, so if you're going to do that at home, those are two companies I recommend. Oh. Sleepy boy. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, if you've got something you want me to cover in an upcoming episode, happy hour, uh, drop me a note through the website or the Facebook page. And I'm so tired. That's it. And that's it. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you next Friday. Hopefully some teeth will have erupted by then. And We'll chat then. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful for at least one mom out there who is panicked about this. Uh, it's so hard being a mom these days. All right. Uh, take care, you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.